City Skylines 2 is not doing well. That is a problem for all city builder lovers because we want the genre to keep moving forward, taking everyone along with a solid ride on a new release that ticks all the boxes and does things right. If City 2's falters, the city builder community loses out on an opportunity to not only enjoy improvements on Cities 1, but also a chance to grow a new generation of players that can keep the genre strong and growing. Yes, it's only been a week since release at the time of this recording, but it's a flashing red light of an issue that needs attention fast to get that Cities 2 course corrected. And I know lots of people will start comments about Cities 2 with, well, performance issues aside, but performance issues are very real right now, and getting them sorted is not a matter of finding the right magic wand to wave. If those performance issues don't get fixed, this game goes nowhere. Gamers Nexus started its review of Cities Skylines 2 performing scathingly, calling Cities 2 one of the worst optimized games we've ever tested. They didn't even test at 4K resolution, things were so bad. They had best performance versus appearance results on the $1700 Nvidia RTX 4090 at 1080p on medium resolution. The $900 Radeon RX 7900 does slightly better than the 4090, but again, that's 1080p on medium. Different players will have different reactions to that stat. So far, most are not happy with it, but a substantial chunk of players are fine with it. Thing is, it's much better for a game if the overwhelming percentage of players are happy with performance. I'm a player that wanted better performance so that I could make Cities 2 videos for my channel and get on that ride with the game towards a better tomorrow and so on and so on. Right now, I'm looking at how my video on getting a refund for Cities 2 is the most watched on my channel in the last 48 hours. It's not leveling off after a week and going cold to no, know it's doing the line go up thing pretty well and most of those views are coming up from Google searches nobody connected with the game once getting a refund for it to be a trending search term paradox is already having to deal with mass refunds for console players when they announced earlier in October about the delay of the console release to spring 2024 for PC players to also be investigating that is a danger red flag sign and that does beg the question why the PC version wasn't delayed as well. But look at the likes and the dislikes and the current player counts. Cities 2 is already a week after release dramatically down from launch figures on both the weekday and the all-important weekend numbers. Here we can see how there were over 104,000 players on launch and now a week later in 31 October and as well 1 November we're peaking out around 45, 46,000. We do see a higher bump here on the weekends but again, this is nowhere near as high as it was at launch. If we see even lower numbers for the next weekend coming up, that's a very important sign for the declining popularity of the game. Now, the makers of the game would hope that it stays top of mind in its audience and that good sales strength and popularity lead to a big push at Christmas and everybody gets a nice bonus or something like that. We get a good game, they get good sales, everybody benefits, right? Now, to be fair, other games, popular and flops alike, always show a drop off after launch, but the flops drop faster and stay lower. Baldur's Gate 3 did have a massive launch at over 875,000 players and it did level off off, but you look at how long it took to level off. These are indications that players are going through an entire run of the game or maybe even two runs of the game before they say, whew, now I can stop taking time off from work and get back to business or play other games or what have you. This game was definitely top of mind for a large chunk of the population that was playing it. And even now, three months after release, it is still well loved and being played heavily, about a fourth of what we had at launch. Even during the weekdays, it's peaking at about an eighth of its launch numbers. This is a strong game. Sid Meier's Civilization VI, which was released seven years ago, look at this staying power. Yes, it's down from its peak, but it's about a third or a fourth of the peak numbers, and this is consistent. You can't tell where Cities 2 got released, you can barely tell where Baldur's Gate 3 got released, because over time, yes, it had that drop then look at how it steadily climbs up we've got these peaks that do help average numbers up but the troughs are getting higher and higher look at this low count here 59475 compared to a high count back here of 25,000 or 30,000 this game has grown in popularity over the years this is a well loved game that is impressive how it built up from this trough to a higher average player number even in the middle of the week speaking of well loved games let's talk about Civilization 5. Right now, 16,000 players, and you take a look, this thing has got a rock-solid core of players. It, too, 
had that drop and then built up massively after launch and held that plateau for quite some time. And then as Civ 6 got better, more players converted from Civ 5 to Civ 6, but even so, we still got a solid chunk that are playing that game even in 2023. That is an example of a very well-loved game. You can see that love here in the likes and dislikes. Over 10 years, 7,500 dislikes and 186,000 likes. That's incredible. Now, Civilization VI has a lot more than 4,000 dislikes, but it also has a lot more likes. 244,000. Again, this is over a seven-year period, an 84.76% approval rating. Baldur's Gate has definitely started strong and stayed strong. 365,000 likes? Wow! Wow, that's incredible. I know it's just been released, but this is an example of an incredible release experience. Yes, there were performance issues, but they weren't game-breaking. I know some people said they were game-breaking, but most people played the game and had a fun time, and the patches came quickly and addressed almost all of those issues right off the bat. That's not to say that they're done working on Baldur's Gate 3, it's just that they've been very responsive, and the issues with the graphics and play have not been game-breaking for, well, 365,853 people. City Skylines 1, another well-loved game, 92% overall over its seven-year history, 229,000 likes and 16,000 dislikes. To compare, Cities 2 in just one week has already got 11,000 dislikes. That means if it has a seven-year history, it can only get 5,000 more dislikes to equal Cities 1's number of dislikes. That's less than 1,000 per year, and it's got 11,000 in the first week. Looking at that percentage number, this is over 40% of all the reviews for it. And it wasn't getting review bombed by haters. It was getting honest negative reviews from people that had a poor experience with the game. Much of that a poor experience was related to performance. That's what Paradox and Colossal Order have to address. But another way, if Cities 2 had not had those performance issues, we wouldn't see most of those negative reviews, and the game would be coming across as a massive hit. We'd also be seeing higher current player numbers. And although there were still negative reviews regarding things like the availability of mods and assets for the game, those complaints are still tied to performance. Let me show you. In my Cities 1 game, I have lots of mods and assets. I'm not bragging, but I'm also not confessing a sin. It is what it is, and this is how I play my game. I collect buildings. All right, let's take a look at one of them. It's going to be this one here. It's a standard looking corner office, right? It's nice. Well, how is this relevant? It's relevant when we zoom in, because when we zoom in, we see the rooftop AC units, blades spinning. Do they serve any purpose in the game? Not really, but they look cool, and that's ultimately what a lot of players want, a cool looking city. The asset maker put them there because they look cool. The same asset maker and others made asset packs that utilize a common pool of assets that the loading screen mod in Cities 1 will optimize in terms of memory usage. Graphics wise, they simply don't render until I zoom in. And that's the thing that makes me wonder aloud if Cities 2 is ready for mods and assets that have those realistic details of AC units, antennas, and fire escapes and other elements that Cities 1 players just take for granted in our assets. How does Cities 2 standing on that? In Cities 1, I don't think about how these are going to tax our system. I just subscribe to them and the assets they use and have some fun. The Cities 2 has to match that experience and I don't think it can right now. If it's already having issues with the vanilla load of assets that frankly don't have a lot of moving parts from what I've seen, except for the constant tree motion, and if the game that was already struggling to deliver decent performance at 1080p on a medium setting for a top shelf graphics card has to suddenly deal with lots more building textures and animated assets, I mean, look at what I have going on here. This is not a bog standard vanilla game. I have lots of custom assets, but the game manages in Cities 1. Cities 2, it's struggling. How is it going to handle this? Those cool new assets will mean further performance degradation. I like how my Cities 1 plays, but I've also been able to toggle settings to get it that way. I turned off weather, I turned off the day-night cycle, I have a mod that lets me pick time of day and where the sun is in the sky, and probably most importantly, I turned off tree movement. If Cities 2 gave us those options, not just in dev mode, but up front in the regular GUI, and we got better performance from getting the sun to not move from where we like it and to stop the trees from shivering constantly, a lot of us would be fine with that, especially if it meant we could then counter those gains in performance with new in-game assets. If Cities 2 was a pure spreadsheet game with zero individual buildings and everything focused on zoning, traffic, and commerce, then the simulation crowd would still be playing it, the detailers would be totally absent, but the game would likely have no performance issues and still deliver a city maintenance experience. But the fact is, 
they can't make just a spreadsheet game because a huge part of the city building genre community is made up of people who like detailed assets, who like to go in and nudge things around and make everything tooled just right so it looks, well, pretty. We are a huge part of the city building community and we are waiting on the sidelines for the graphics to improve so the assets can be released. And if the game makers can't get all that ready in time for December, they're going to have a sad time at Christmas. This is a chart of City 1 players for the last three months. Looking at this, you can't tell when Baldur's Gate 3 released. It doesn't show up here. The same players are playing the game. Worse, you can't even tell where Cities 2 got released, and that is a huge red flag. It's not that the Cities 1 solid base of players are going to play the game no matter what and never upgrade again. It's that they're only going to upgrade if there's something better to upgrade to. Let's look at their daily totals, and let's take a look at those daily totals. You've got the spikes in the weekend and the same number of players all through the week. You can't tell that Cities 2 has released. Cities 2 failed to inspire these players enough to make them move and adopt it as the new game of choice. One of the biggest asks from Cities 1 players was for Cities 2 to have awesome graphics. It totally updated the look and feel of the game. What we got was a game that had terrible graphics at launch and the post-launch patch that tried to do some optimization gave some level of improvement but not good enough to budge the assessment of its graphics situation in a meaningful way. Remember the those Gamers Nexus reviews, those were done on the post-release patch. The CEO of Colossal Order made a statement today and it acknowledges the performance issues. And yes, it's all about level of detail or LOD. Remember how the air conditioning units were rendering or not rendering depending on how far away we were? That's what they're trying to tune in the game right now. Thinking about those spinning fans and everything else that's moving around in the game, they need to have optimized LOD so they're not rendering when they really can't be seen. Part of the statement also alludes to level of detail on characters. Where Cities 1 left its peoples as triangulated textures, Cities 2 has eyeballs, fingernails, and teeth to render, which makes me scratch my head as to why that's even part of the LOD equation until one is actually zoomed in close enough to make out those details in a passerby. But this does draw the line underneath the performance issues in Cities 2. It's not a matter of potato shaming the people with older or budget graphics cards. It's a matter of the programmers getting things right in the game so that everyone with the minimum hardware on up can have a fun experience with the game, especially one that has thousands more highly detailed assets than at present. If they don't fix these issues now, they're certainly not going to be fixed when they dump new assets into the game. As a player who wants to create beautiful, vibrant cities for years and decades to come, it's important to me as well that the programmers at Colossal Order get this sorted and soon. SimCity 2013 was a terrible dead end for the genre, and we truly don't need another one if we expect game studios to put time and effort into making the next generation of city builders.